All right, so you just bought your first or second snake, maybe your third or fourth, but you're deathly afraid of it um, because it's defensive, it's kind of snippy, maybe it tries to look like it's biting at you. And ultimately what you want is a snake like this female here who is huge and isn't scared of anything and also um, is okay if I'm touching her head and would never bite a single soul in the entire world. Well, with some snakes, you have to work up to that. Um, in this video, I want to kind of go over with you guys, you know, how to kind of get over your fears a little bit and how to try to kind of read the body language of a ball python. Um, it's not very hard. And to be completely honest, to this day, after owning dozens and dozens and 100 plus snakes uh, and some lizards, I don't like being bit either. There's my confession. I know a lot of people will stick their hand in a tub or a cage and not care if they get bit by a snake. It doesn't hurt. I mean, I've been bitten by my biggest ball pythons. Uh, my lychee gecko chewed me up last week. Um, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't feel good either. I don't like being bit. I've probably been bit by three ball pythons in five years of doing this. I was bit more by my lychee last week than I have been by ball pythons since I've uh, been breeding these guys. So I don't like being bit. Um, but I know how to read the body language of a ball python to know whether or not I'm going to get bit, I'm going to get a strike, or whether that snake uh, is very kind of in the chill it out mode. So obviously this girl, um, just watching her, she's not agitated, she's not tense, she's got these little kind of tongue flicks, she's in kind of roaming mode, and she's like this every single time I open up her tub. Uh, she's never looking for food. She is never defensive. And you're just gonna have some ball pythons that have better temperaments than other ones. And it's gonna be like that with a lot of snakes. I have two rat snakes, uh, two cave dwelling rat snakes. And one of them is a complete jerk. And I actually just use gloves to take them out and to clean them because it just the whole time, <laughs> it bit my glove probably 10 times the 10 seconds I was in there. The other one could care less that I was in there picking it up. So it's gonna depend a lot on the snake itself. But in general, out of all of these ball pythons that I have in here, most of them have a pretty good attitude. The only time that you're kind of running into the defensive behavior uh, more often is when you have babies. You're big, you got a big meaty claw hand, you're going in there to grab it. It's afraid of that, it's not used to it yet. Um, so I'll, I wanna show you guys some ways to kind of deal with the hatchlings when you're picking them up and taking them out um, and show you some more defensive behavior in some of the bigger snakes too. All right, so this is my daughter, Maddie. She's almost five. You wanna say hi to everybody? Hi. Well, Maddie, are you afraid of snakes? No. How come? Because they're so nice to me. They're nice, huh? So Maddie has grown up, I've been breeding snakes basically since right before she was born. So she's grown up with the snakes and she has no fear of them, which can be a bad thing um, because they, when kids are this young, they don't know how to read the body language of a snake. So you have to be weary of that. You don't want your kids just um, <laughs> sticking their hands into tubs or in aquariums and not realizing, hey, that snake doesn't want to be picked up. But she has held princess a ton of times. Um, so. We're gonna open up the tub here for Princess. So you remember Princess, right? She's yeah. the big one. She's nice. She's super nice, huh? Yeah, she's so super nice. She doesn't even bite me a lot. She doesn't bite you ever. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how to pick her up? Yeah, I do. You do? You wanna try? Remember, the or the rolls are never go near their head, right? I'm going right here. Yeah, you're going to the back. Never go near the snake's head because it scares them. I can't hold him. Can't get, I, don't, I don't want to break him. No, you won't break her here. Put okay. your hand under here. I don't want to. I don't want to break him. You won't break her. She's so big. She's a big girl. She's, oh my gosh, she's, she's heavy. Big and healthy. Oh my gosh, huh? she's so heavy. She's so heavy. Oh my gosh, she's so. Oh my god. She's so so nice too, huh? Oh my gosh, she's so heavy. I'm gonna some trouble. Hey, you can put her on your shoulder. She's too big. <laughs> oh, that help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But she's nice, huh? Ah, is she giving me kisses? But she's not scary, is she? No. And basically the goal is that when you get a snake that is this big, and she's a big 4,000 gram female, 
um, you want them to be super calm. And to do that, you kind of have to start off young with some of them and hold them often and have a positive interaction with them very often. Because at this size, uh, you know, ball pythons aren't huge and they don't have the biggest teeth in the snake world or, or even the biggest uh, jaw muscles. But, you know, they could still make things <laughs> smart <laughs> when you bite them. And this girl, as you can see, um, doesn't have a, a mean bone on her body and she's a, a favorite of all the kids when they come over here. Um, but you have to work with them often. Like, and Maddie comes down here. This is one of her favorite ones to pick up because her name is Princess, right? Um, well, can I name her Ariel Nelson? We have to name another one Ariel Nelson because <laughs> her name's already Princess. Well, can we name her next one Elsa and then her third one? We'll have to find one of the name Elsa. Um, but this is how you kind of want to be Ariel. with snakes. The more you're around them and the more your family is around them, the more comfortable you're going to be around them once you kind of start to understand that they're not bloodthirsty killers um and they're kind of just cute little animals all right this is my wife katie hi um i made videos last year with her uh about her overcoming her fear of snakes because believe it or not and i'm sure there are quite a few out there that have purchased snakes whether it's one or racks full of them like i have and their spouses or significant others are deathly afraid of every living thing in these bins. Um, so we did a kind of a small series about her overcoming her fear of uh, holding snakes, being around snakes, touching snakes. And this was like three or four years into me owning them. Um, so it was kind of a long time overdue. Um, I posted a uh, something on Instagram this week. It, I think if it came out, if not, it's coming out in a day or two about um, her kind of like update, but since I was making this video on YouTube, I kind of wanted to give her a quick interview. Um, so, Katie, um, what were you most afraid of um, with snakes when I first bought them and started uh, growing my collection? It was a fear of snakes in general that I always had since I was a child. And looking back now, I can admit that it was just all the misconceptions I had about them. But when he first started to bring them around me, it was uh, their faces. I was really, really afraid of their faces and that they were going to strangle all of us and kill us. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were afraid of the bitey end? Uh, the bitey end and the like strangling and suffocating us, yeah. Okay. So what... After holding a snake the first time, and after we did our little project last year where you kind of went from small to big, um, how did your misconceptions misconceptions change about snakes? The thing that helped the most was watching John hold them all, and I, I wouldn't even go in the same room as them at first. He, when We were in our old house, and he put them in our laundry room, and I'm like, no, I can't believe you're doing this. I would run in and do the laundry faster than you could believe. Um, but then as I would watch him, and then when I really started seeing Maddie, our little one holding them, and our older daughter, Bella, holding them, and I'm thinking, oh, goodness, this is embarrassing. All these kids are holding them, and I can't. Uh, I decided that that was my motivation to hold them. So the first time I held a baby... And I felt it, and I'm like, oh, it's not slimy like I thought, and oh, it's not trying to hurt me and bite me, is what made me feel more comfortable. Now, John says you should hold the bigger ones first. I started with babies, um, and they never bit me, so it let me be more comfortable to move on to bigger snakes. And everybody is going to have their misconceptions about snakes. Um, for the most part, in general, if you have older snakes and they're used to being handled, they're going to be more calm than the babies because the babies are still in the defensive, defenseless state. They're tiny, they're at the bottom of the food chain, and they are kind of uh, afraid of everything. Whereas if you have a bigger snake that's been around forever, that's not the bottom of the food chain, it's not going to be as afraid of people and it's going to be used to being held. So. While the bigger stature of the snake might be scary to a lot of people that haven't been around them, um, kind of getting that person to understand that, hey, this is actually calmer than the babies, even though they're bigger, because they've been around the block and they're used to this. Um, now, not being a snake breeder um, and not being around them every day like I am, 
what are some things that you've learned from me or from just being around the the scene in general that have kind of helped you not be afraid of them um other than our video series last year um like what's what's helped you kind of be more comfortable around them watching their mannerisms to see how calm they actually really are that they prefer to just be in their ball state <laughs> and <laughs> uh, <Okay. laughs> it made me feel better to see that I guess that they weren't constantly on the run and moving I thought they all were going to be slithering around all the time like moving fast and that scared me so to watch them that most of the time they're just kind of laying there pretty it, chill they call them the pet rock for a reason because nine out of ten ball pythons are usually just going to be sitting there when you <laughs> when you pull out their tub now they're a nocturnal too so i mean they're more active during the night but um they're not necessarily the most active snake when you go ahead and pull them out uh is there anything else you want to add if i can do it you can do it because i literally used to run run away like run out of the house run into different rooms if I brought a snake upstairs, she would scream and run in the other room. Um, <laughs> and I wasn't throwing it on her. I was literally just walking upstairs with one on my neck, and she'd scream and run in the other room. So, you know, and here I am standing. It's inches away from the snake that's about to crawl up her neck. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> this miserable young lady here is like one of the two or three ball pythons that has ever bit me. Um, and even she is handleable. Um, sometimes they just have bad attitudes. Um, sometimes they're having a bad day. But in general, ball pythons are pretty reliably calm snakes, where I'm sure you've seen a bunch of other species that you can basically never hold them. Um, there are some where you have to get lucky um, that you got one with a good attitude. And sometimes you just can't break them of their miserable, miserable attitude. Um, there are some really calm colubrids, like, you know, corn snakes or milk snakes or garter snakes. The problem with them is that they're pretty fast and they usually don't sit still. They call these guys the pet rock because usually when you pick them up and you're holding them, this is about as much as they're moving. Um, I have a bunch of these guys and there are only a few of them that move a lot. And they still do not move like a colubrid does. They're still not fast like that. So if you're kind of weary of snakes to begin with, ball pythons are good for starters because they don't move a lot. They don't make a lot of fast, twitchy movements. They're pretty slow. They're pretty calm. And if you want a snake that gets to a bigger size, this is it for you. Um, but as you can see, this girl, one of the three that's ever bitten me, I have her right on my hand, I'm touching her head, and she is not aggressive. She's not trying to bite me. She's actually even in shed, which at times can be when they are a little more aggressive because they can't really see um, because they have those milky gray eyes that their you know, scales are trying to come off. Um, they can be a little more aggressive at this point in time because they're, you know, the senses aren't 100%. And she's still pretty chilled out, um, and she's tasted my blood before. <laughs> so, um, you know, in this video, I really kind of want to drive it home to you guys that these aren't something to be afraid of. Um, even my most dangerous ball python right here looks like she's puppy dog tame right now. She's not aggressive. She's not trying to bite me. Um, and even, you know, when you get them out, I mean, they're, this is kind of how they act. They're not usually much more <laughs> movement than this. When you're getting them out of the tub, sometimes that can be a little more tricky. But usually once they're out, um, they're fine for handling. So in this video, I'll kind of go over some tips that I have for you guys. Um, and I will go over some kind of things I've learned and also show you uh, my wife and the kids kind of handling the snakes as well. This is an example of an adult that's just sort of like, okay, cool, what's up? She's kind of just chilling in the back. Uh, she didn't kind of get alerted that I was coming in here at all. Um, she is not kind of like in an S strikey pose. She doesn't have any weird tongue flicks going on, and she's sort of just kind of sitting in her relaxed position. Then we can go up here to the next tub, and this pied female is never in a good mood. Uh, she's already sort of in the S strike position. Uh, she's sort of kind of <laughs> in a weird angle. Now, she's never actually bitten me, um, but I'm very 
cautious with her uh, because she has struck at me before. Um, she's not moving at all. She's kind of in that S position. Um, so a snake like this that's bigger, that you have to move, typically once you get them up and out, they are not going to be aggressive anymore because you're getting them out of that attitude of, uh, don't touch me. So what I'll do with ones like this is you just grab them back here. And typically with a ball python anyways, they're not gonna come after you at that point. So you just pick her up, get her by the back end, away from a, away from the sharp, bitey place, and she's out. Now, that doesn't mean her attitude is gonna change. Um, she, as you can see, she's still kind of in the S strike position, but if you're afraid that she's gonna snap at you, just keep her face away from you when they're this big. Uh, it's very easy to kind of keep their head away from where you're at. Um, but she, you know, that definitely still isn't comfortable. She's still kind of in that strike position. Um, and she's basically always like that. I don't think any of my other females that are super moody, let's see, this girl since Lang has been super angry, but she's actually coiled up now. Um, but let's see, she strikes at everything. You can see I'm touching her and she's getting real tense. Um, she's not biting at me, but I bet you if I stuck my hand right in front of her face, she would bite. However, look, you come back here, you kind of want to get them into the kind of attitude where they want to kind of run away instead of defend themselves. Pick her from behind and look, she's out of the cage. No bites, no strikes. We're okay there. Now there's a big difference when you are using a rack system and when you're using uh, normal glass terrariums. Cages like these, uh, these like these 10 gallons that have the screen lids, the difference with using them and with using a rack or a front opening like the Zoometer Exoterra is your little tiny little baby snake is gonna be down on the bottom. And you're coming in here with your big hand, with a big claw, with your big mouth, and you're grabbing that snake to pick it up. There is no way to come in. Let's get let's get this female again. You come in like this, and you're not scary when you're coming in from underneath her, from the side. Uh, you're coming in down from the top when you're using one of these traditional aquariums. So I highly, highly discourage using any traditional glass aquariums. The easiest thing to do is get one of these front opening ones. You open it up. And you know, you could fill the substrate up all the way if you want to and that way you come in and you come in from the side You don't look as menacing as when you're coming in from top down, especially when you have hatchlings All right now we are going to take a look at the hatchlings Typically most people are buying hatchlings if you're on morph market or you're at the pet store You're getting a hatchling don't buy from the pet stores. Don't buy from Petco. Please buy from morph market or a local breeder um they're usually the ones that are probably gonna try to strike at you more. They're tiny little guys. Uh, they're afraid of everything because they're at the bottom of the food chain. So their normal defensive behavior is to strike, to try to scare off whatever's trying to eat it. And in this case, your hand is what's trying to eat it. Um, so there's a couple ways to kind of get around that. If you're absolutely deathly afraid of picking it up, just put gloves on. Um, Yes, their tiny little needle teeth might be able to get through gloves, but if you're wearing like a canvas work glove, they can't get through it. So that I think that takes away some of the fear. Uh, you just get a nice thick pair of gloves and that solves the issue. Like I said, when I get my rat snakes out, um, I usually use gloves because they're just gonna keep attempting to bite me and I don't need to have any war scars to show anybody just to think I'm cool. Um, so I wear them because I don't feel like getting bit 10 times. So there's nothing wrong with it. You don't wanna be doing it long term because there's no need for it. These guys aren't gonna be like that forever unless you unfortunately get the one out of 100 that just has a bad attitude 24 seven. So um, if you wanna bring the camera in, we're gonna open up this guy here. These hatched in December. And so he's sitting here right in the front. Um, as you can see, he already looks a little agitated. Come up over top a little more. There. Um, he looks agitated. His first instinct was to kind of turn around and see what was going on. And if I come straight down at him, um, or right in front of his face, he's going to probably try to strike at me. So there's a couple ways to come at it. Um, you don't want to go straight at his head because that's going to scare them. 
maybe half of the snakes that you come in straight at head first are probably going to try to bite you defensively. So his head's all the way up here. Um, I could probably get him to strike if I wiggle my hand here a little bit. See how he's getting, he's trying to rear his head up. He's looking at me. He's zeroing me up. He's following my hand and he's going to strike here shortly. Come on. He's getting there. Maybe he's not. He's making me a liar. Okay, so he's not doing it. And I'm not going to try to make him bite. But, so, he's up over that way. There's a very easy way to get around this. Come in right back here. See, he huffed. He puffed. He's not very happy that I'm picking him up. But, look. So, I picked him up. He's got his short little tongue flicks. But he's already in my hands. So, very rarely do they attempt to strike you once you've already picked them up. Um, this guy, he's not comfortable. He's still like very stiff. His head's still sort of kind of cocked in that S position. Um, he's not really staring at me, but he's not like happy yet. Um, but he's also not trying to strike me. You basically, if you have a scared defensive little baby snake, you're going to have to do this every so often, a couple of times a week to kind of chill them out to let them know that hey when i see this hand it's not necessarily a bad thing um the other thing you can do with them once you get them out is if you touch their head they're called ball pythons because when they're scared they go into little balls so if you kind of touch their head a little bit it's going to kind of tell them hey this is not something i want to mess with um and they're going to kind of try to retreat and you really want them in that retreat mode because then they're not being defensive and trying to bite you anymore at that point. Now this guy, he's out of the 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 bite mode at this point. Um, you know, he's trying to kind of try to hide from me and he's probably a little stressed out. Um, so you don't want to keep him out too long at that point. But he is definitely out of the defensive bite mode. And that's kind of where you want them. So you hold them for a little bit. And as they grow, as they're used to you picking them up, that kind of goes away. Um, the worst thing you could do is go to put your hand in there and um, if they do try to strike at you or if they do hit you, you, you pull your hand away or you accidentally hit the snake when you're trying to pull your hand out because that's gonna kind of reinforce to them that when this hand comes in here, that's bad. So if you're definitely afraid of getting a bite from one of these guys, put some gloves on. Um, so that way you know that even if they do make contact with you and try to bite you, it's not going to hurt. It's kind of a little protective shield for you. And then it makes it so that when you're actually going to try to pull the snake out, um, you don't hurt it and you're not afraid of, you know, what happens when, when you go in there. So but as you can see now, he's fine. Um, he's not really showing any defensive behavior. Uh, he doesn't want to be in my hand. <laughs> he's not moving around. He's not in a, you know, kind of a happy state. But... Um, he's also not trying to bite me. So this is kind of where you want them at once you get them out. And nine times out of 10, when you pull a ball python out, after they've had a chance to relax, this is what their temperament's gonna be, especially as hatchlings. I'm almost certain this female is gonna try to strike me because uh, for some reason, oh, this clutch, I, there's two Mojave pied females from this clutch and they both have the same feisty attitude. Um, so she's on top of the paper here. You can see her immediate attitude. She is keying me up. Um, she's looking straight at me. And she's not super happy about me coming anywhere near her. So if I show you, I'm surprised she's not striking her. Because usually every time I go in here, she's looking like she's trying to bite me. Those little tiny tongue flicks in her positioning are kind of telling you, hey, uh, <laughs> I don't like this hand being in here. Um, be careful because I might try to bite you. Um, so there are a couple ways to get around that. Again, you want to come from behind the snake. So she is looking straight at me. She's looking straight at my hand. She doesn't like it being there. So what you can try to do is come around from behind the snake and she might follow you a little bit and she is following me. But if you come from back here, just be real. Look, she's trying to follow me a little bit. Look, I got behind her and pick her up from the back and look she didn't now she bucked me a little bit there she's got this kind of agitated tongue flick still um, but she actually didn't strike at me at that time so 
you know, every time I pull one of these out, they make me a liar because I, I can almost guarantee you she's going to try to strike at me. Now, she is still super agitated. Her body is very tense. Uh, she doesn't like being held. But going in there slow with kind of some sort of determination shows you and tells her, hey, you know, there's not somebody trying to attack me. I'm not coming in in a very agitated manner. Uh, I was coming in very purposefully. I try to come in from the side from underneath as much as you can. And she wasn't um, sensing any imminent danger, I guess. So she kind of relaxed a little bit for me to pick her up without her striking. Now, as you can see, she's still agitated. Those are really kind of agitated tongue flicks. She's still kind of in the S position. She's not necessarily going to strike, but, um, you know, she... <laughs> isn't super angry as she was before and that's kind of what you have to do you kind of kind of got to work in repetition um you have to kind of be comfortable yeah you know, kind of get over the fear just mentally uh that they're not gonna you know hurt you i mean it doesn't feel good to get bit but these guys are small and if you want to calm them down kind of tame them down you want to do it when they're this size not when they're you know a hundred times this size um but she obviously kind of went and was a little more okay with the way I came in that time. All right, so if you don't have any gloves or don't feel like wearing them and you wanna go barehanded for some reason, the other trick that I've shown people is to get something like a paper towel or a rag and kind of use it as a blinder for the snake. So it's over top of the snake's head now, right? Did you hear her huff, huff and puff? So she's angry. <laughs> but this acts as a barrier between the bitey end of the snake and your hand. Um, and it kind of works, I guess, like blinders on a horse. Um, you know, what they can't see <laughs> can't hurt them. And then what you can do, you hear her huffing and puffing, so she's angry. Um, look, I can pick her up. It's blocking her head, and I don't got to worry about the bitey end. So that way, you can pick up the snake and get her out of there without her developing, like, a ton of anger and fear at you. Um, because this is acting as sort of just a... A barrier between the bitey end and the snake when you're going to pick them up. Um, so that's a good little trick that I've shown people. Um, you know, if they don't use gloves, but if you're if this is your first snake, and I remember getting my first snake a while ago, 20 years ago. Um, there's a bigger corn snake, and again, they don't hurt, but it also doesn't feel good to get bit by anything. So I was kind of nervous about picking it up, and you kind of have to. Figure out what works best for you um, in terms of how to get that snake out, especially if it's not super friendly. Um, but using little tricks like, you know, paper towel blinders or using gloves can help you overcome the fear if the snake's still defensive when you bring it home. Now, there are also snakes that I just kind of call runners. Um, basically, you go to pick them up and their first and only reflex is to flee. Um, and they're really not handleable, and I'm going to show you one. Um, yeah, because the male, I have a male and a female that do it, and the male's being paired up right now. Um, so I've had this girl for like two years, and she just has not calmed down. Now, she never tries to bite. Uh, she's not a biter, but she's not comfortable being held, and her first instinct is to just flee. And like, like my wife called her Flojo. <laughs> Um, because um, they don't like being held and they just want to run away. And their defense, instead of trying to bite, is to just try to run. So she's an adult female that's proven. Um, and again, she's not fleeing like I said she wants to do. But she's never comfortable being held. Um, she never calms down. She never stops moving. So you might run into having a snake like that. But that behavior is very different than a snake that's defensive and bitey. Um, it just means that they're trying to get away. And as you can see, look, she's a little faster than the other ball pythons I've shown you. Um, she's moving a lot. She's not comfortable just kind of sitting there. She's trying to get away and strangle me at different times. <laughs> Maybe her only way of getting away is strangling me. Um, so, you know, you have runners um, that don't want to be held, that keep trying to get away. And that's something that, you know, I have maybe two or three snakes like that. I don't really, I haven't been able to kind of break them of that. Once they're a runner, they're kind of always a runner in my book, um, or at least in my experience. So those aren't snakes that you have to worry about attacking you or being defensive and striking, um, but they are snakes 
um, that, as you can see, like she's, I mean, that's, that's fast for a ball python if you own a ball python. Um, she just wants to get away. Um, and you can see how fast she's going. She just doesn't want, doesn't like being held and she's fast movements and she's kind of not in a good mood about it, but she's not, she's not striking. Um, she's not trying to bite me. She's just a runner. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope I covered every, anything you had questions about. Um, if you have any more fears or, or questions about this topic, comment below um, and I can either answer your questions or make another video about it in the future if it's something that kind of requires more of an explanation. Um, but, you know, it's pretty straightforward and I hope that the tips I gave you helped. I hope, I hope you know, seeing a, a four-year-old and my wife who's afraid of snakes for her life pick these guys up um, kind of helped kind of uh, make your fears subside a little bit and showing you a bunch of different snakes that all really at the end of the day the two that I thought would maybe strike at me didn't um, the miserable adult that I have didn't show any aggression towards me plus I showed a bunch of other snakes um, that you know were kind of cool and calm as well so Hopefully this video helps, and if you have any more questions or fears, please comment down below. Thank you guys for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.